Schedules. In the next chapter, we will talk about schedules. Schedules are an essential part in Revit. And as you know, Revit uses BIM technology, building information modeling. And schedules are a very organized way to display project information as well as estimation of costs of the materials. In this tutorial, we will cover the basics in schedules so you can start making your own tables. Let's have this example again of this two-story house. Here I have already inserted rooms and furniture and first we are going to create a schedule to display all the rooms along with their areas. Let's click here on the project browser in Schedules and Quantities with the right button and then click on New Schedule. In the window that has just opened, we need to select a category for the schedule. As you can see, we have a considerable variety of topics to choose. I go for Rooms. Then this is the name of the new schedule. And I can change it to a personalized one if I wish. Then below we have Face. And what is this? This is related with the phases of construction in a project. Sometimes we have an existing building which we want to perform a change. For example, demolish some walls and build new ones. In this example, as we suppose this is a new construction, we keep this option. Also, this is important to know. The phase is specified in all the elements we model in our project. And by default, that is set as new construction. Therefore, if I change this to existing, I will have an empty list as I don't have any elements in that phase. Click on OK. And now the next window is the Schedule Properties. There are several settings organized in the tabs above. In the first tab, we have to choose the fields of the columns. And the available fields may change according to the category of the schedule. As this is a room schedule, we are going to add the following columns. Area. Then click in this button to add it to the table. And then the others will be name, the number of the room, and level. After, we can use these buttons to change the order of the columns. And the top field will be at the left of the schedule, and the bottom field at the right end. Press OK. And the table was automatically created. Now, let's see how to edit some properties here. First, look at the sorting. I'm going to click on Sorting Grouping and I can sort by one or several parameters. Suppose I want to separate the rooms of each floor. In this case, Level is the main sorting field. And also set Ascending. First, I display the rooms at the ground floor and then the rooms in the first floor. Next, I'm going to add a second sorting field. Let's say I want to have the room numbers in numerical order. And at the end, I click on OK. OK, nice. Then go again to the same options panel. And this time, I'm going to check this box header. And the rooms separate in two groups regarding the level they are located. Checking blank line adds an extra space below the last row of each group. Below each group, we can also add a footer. And we can choose from several options. Let's use this one by default, Title, Count and Totals. And it's going to display the title of the group, then it counts the number of rows, and adds a cell for the totals. Click on OK, and let's see the result. Here we can see the title, zero ground floor, the number of rooms, but nothing is shown for the area. Actually, if we want to calculate the total area, we need an extra step. And that's what we are going to see now. Go to formatting. Ah, and notice that these are actually the panels in the schedule properties. I choose area here, and where it says no calculation, 
I'm going to change it to calculate totals. And there are more options here that I may need in a different situation. I close the window. And here you can see that I add a total area for each level. Now let's see a couple of tips here. This first one is useful when I don't know the location of the rooms. When I click in a cell, the corresponding room is selected when I switch to a floor plan view, for example this one. Also, I want to tell you how I can change the text of the schedule. It's easy. On appearance, switch schedule default to a specific text. Then you can set a different text size for the title, header or the body. Ok, now I'm going to create a schedule about information of the furniture in the project. I go again to Schedules Quantities and create a new schedule. In this window, I'm going to choose Furniture in the category list. And this time, the fields that I'm going to add will be those Family and Type, Count and Cost. Then click on OK to generate the schedule. So here we can see all the furniture elements that I have in the project. And on count, the number of items of each type. But all the rows have only one item and even some elements are repeated. So how can I group the elements of the same type and count them? To do this, we can go to Sorting Grouping and notice that this box is checked. Itemize every instance. I need to turn this off in order to group similar items in the same cell. Then on Sort by, I choose Family and Type, click OK and the list is much smaller now. The elements of the same type are represented in the same cell with the quantity that they exist in the drawing. Now let's see how we can calculate costs of the items within a schedule. First, I'm going to increase the size of the first column, so I can see better the text here. Then, at the right, I have the column for the parameter cost, and there are two ways to insert values here. I can insert the cost of each item directly in the cell, or edit in the properties of a specific family type. In the Identity Data section, there is the value for the cost, so I can change it here if I wish and it updates on the schedule. Also, the cost that I put here only applies in this project. And most of the time the families have by default the parameter cost empty. Now, let's learn how we can make simple calculations in schedules, in this case for cost estimation. As you remember, the values in the cost parameter correspond to just one item. For example, I have 18 elements of this chair, but 25 is just the cost of a single one. So in this example, I'm going to add a new column with the total cost for each family type. Let's go to Fields. And this time I will add a calculated parameter. Click on this button. Then insert a name for the new column, for example total cost. Then the type of value, I'm going to choose currency, as it's what we need. And for the formula, I click here to check out which are my available parameters. And I can see that there is only one, cost. Now you may think, but I also want to use the count parameter here because what I want is to calculate count times the cost. That makes sense, but unfortunately count is not available for formulas, as Revit uses a different method, which we are going to cover right away. So first we will use only cost, and what happens is that I copy the values of each row to this new column. Then what I need is going to formatting, select total cost, and where it says no calculation, I change to calculate totals. And what happens is that the values are multiplied by the number of items. 
Finally, to add a cell for the total cost of the furniture, it's in sorting grouping. And you can see below a checkbox for the ground totals. I click on it, I can set a custom title if I want, and at this moment I will show the title, count and totals. Click in OK, and this is how it appears in the table. If I don't need to show the total number of items, just choose Title and Totals instead. The column cost, I can rename it to Unit Cost to distinguish it from the total cost. Ok, it looks like we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to Cadden Black. There you can find all the content of tutorials for beginners. See you on the next occasion.